Louis IX, the 25th of April 1214 to the 25th of August 1270, commonly known as Saint Louis, was King of France, the ninth from the House of Capet, and is a canonized Catholic and Anglican saint. Louis was crowned in Reims at the age of 12, following the death of his father Louis VIII the Lion, although his mother, Blanche of Castile, ruled the kingdom until he reached maturity. During Louis's childhood, Blanche dealt with the opposition of rebellious vassals and put an end to the Albigensian Crusade which had started 20 years earlier. As an adult, Louis IX faced recurring conflicts with some of the most powerful nobles, such as Hugh X of Lusignan and Peter of Drew. Simultaneously, Henry III of England tried to restore his continental possessions, but was utterly defeated at the Battle of Tyborg. His reign saw the annexation of several provinces, notably Normandy, Maine and Provence. Louis IX was a reformer and developed French royal justice, in which the king was the supreme judge to whom anyone could appeal to seek the amendment of a judgment. He banned trials by ordeal, tried to prevent the private wars that were plaguing the country, and introduced the presumption of innocence in criminal procedure. To enforce the application of this new legal system, Louis IX created provosts and bailiffs. Following a vow he made after a serious illness and confirmed after a miraculous cure, Louis IX took an active part in the Seventh and Eighth Crusades. He died from dysentery during the latter crusade, and was succeeded by his son Philip III. Louis's actions were inspired by Christian zeal and Catholic devotion. He decided to severely punish blasphemy for which he set the punishment to mutilation of the tongue and lips, gambling, interest-bearing loans and prostitution. He spent exorbitant sums on presumed relics of Christ, for which he built the Saint Chapelle, and he expanded the scope of the Inquisition and ordered the burning of Talmuds and other Jewish books. He is the only canonized king of France, and there are consequently many places named after him. Sources Much of what is known of Louis's life comes from Jean de Joinville's famous life of St. Louis. Joinville was a close friend, confidant, and counselor to the king, and he also participated as a witness in the papal inquest into Louis's life that ended with his canonization in 1297 by Pope Boniface VIII. Two other important biographies were written by the king's confessor, Geoffrey of Beaulieu, and his chaplain, William of Chartres. While several individuals wrote biographies in the decades following the king's death, only Jean of Joinville, Geoffrey of Beaulieu, and William of Chartres wrote from personal knowledge of the king, and all three are biased favorably to the king. The fourth important source of information is William of St. Parthus's 19th-century biography, which he wrote using the papal inquest mentioned above. Early life Louis was born on 25 April 1214 at Poissy, near Paris, the son of Prince Louis the Lion and Princess Blanche, and baptized in La Collégiale Notre Dame Church. His grandfather on his father's side was Philip II, King of France, while his grandfather on his mother's side was Alfonso VIII, King of Castile. Tutors of Blanche's choosing taught him most of what a king must know. Latin, public speaking, writing, military arts, and government. He was nine years old when his grandfather Philip II died and his father ascended as Louis VIII. Louis was twelve years old when his father died on 8 November 1226. He was crowned king within the month at Reims Cathedral. Because of Louis's youth, his mother ruled France as regent during his minority. Louis's mother trained him to be a great leader and a good Christian. She used to say, I love you, my dear son, as much as a mother can love her child, but I would rather see you dead at my feet than that you should ever commit a mortal sin. His younger brother Charles I of Sicily was created Count of Anjou, thus founding the Capetian Angevin dynasty. No date is given for the beginning of Louis's personal rule. His contemporaries viewed his reign as co-rule between the king and his mother, though historians generally view the year 1234 as the year in which Louis began ruling personally, with his mother assuming a more advisory role. She continued to have a strong influence on the king until her death in 1252. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Marriage. On 27 May 1234, Louis married Margaret of Provence 1221 December 1295, whose sister Eleanor later became the wife of Henry III of England. 
The new queen's religious zeal made her a well-suited partner for the king. He enjoyed her company, and was pleased to show her the many public works he was making in Paris, both for its defense and for its health. They enjoyed writing together, reading, and listening to music. This attention raised a certain amount of jealousy in his mother, who tried to keep them apart as much as she could. <laughs> Disputation of Paris In the 1230s, Nicholas Donan, a Jewish convert to Christianity, translated the Talmud and pressed 35 charges against it to Pope Gregory IX by quoting a series of blasphemous passages about Jesus, Mary or Christianity. There is a Talmudic passage, for example, where Jesus of Nazareth is sent to hell to be boiled in excrement for eternity. Donan also selected an injunction of the Talmud that permits Jews to kill non-Jews. This led to the Disputation of Paris, which took place in 1240 at the court of Louis IX, where Rabbi Yeshiel of Paris defended the Talmud against the accusations of Nicholas Donan. The translation of the Talmud from Judeo-Aramaic to a non-Jewish, profane language was seen by Jews as a profound violation. The disputation led to the condemnation of the Talmud and the burning of thousands of copies. Crusading When Louis was 15, his mother brought an end to the Albigensian Crusade in 1229 after signing an agreement with Count Raymond VII, Count of Toulouse that cleared the latter's father of wrongdoing. Raymond V, Count of Toulouse had been suspected of murdering a preacher on a mission to convert the Cathars. Louis went on two crusades, in his mid-thirties in 1248 Seventh Crusade, and then again in his mid-fifties in 1270 Eighth Crusade. Seventh Crusade In 1248 Louis decided that his obligations as a son of the church outweighed those of his throne, and he left his kingdom for a disastrous six-year adventure. Since the base of Muslim power had shifted to Egypt, Louis did not even march on the Holy Land. Any war against Islam now fit the definition of a crusade. Louis and his followers landed in Egypt on 5 June 1249 and began his first crusade with the rapid capture of the port of Damietta. This attack caused some disruption in the Muslim Ayyubid Empire, especially as the current Sultan, al Malik as Salah Najm al Din Ayyub, was on his deathbed. However, the march from Damietta toward Cairo through the Nile River Delta went slowly. The rising of the Nile and the summer heat made it impossible for them to advance and follow up on their success. During this time, the Ayyubid Sultan died, and the Sultan's wife Shahar al dur set in motion a sudden power shift that would make her queen and eventually place the Egyptian army of the Mamluks in power. On 6 April 1250 Louis lost his army at the Battle of al-Mansura and was captured by the Egyptians. His release was eventually negotiated in return for a ransom of 400,000 livres tournois at the time France's annual revenue was only about 1,250,000 livres tournois and the surrender of the city of Damietta. <laughs> Four years in Latin kingdoms Following his release from Egyptian captivity, Louis spent four years in the Latin kingdoms of Acre, Caesarea, and Jaffa, using his wealth to assist the Crusaders in rebuilding their defenses and conducting diplomacy with the Islamic powers of Syria and Egypt. In the spring of 1254, he and his army returned to France. Louis exchanged multiple letters and emissaries with Mongol rulers of the period. During his first crusade in 1248, Louis was approached by envoys from El Jigade, the Mongol military commander stationed in Armenia and Persia. El Jigade suggested that King Louis should land in Egypt, while El Jigade attacked Baghdad, to prevent the Saracens of Egypt and those of Syria from joining forces. Louis sent André de Longjumeau, a Dominican priest, as an emissary to the great Khan Gayak Khan in Mongolia. Gayak died before the emissary arrived at his court, however, and nothing concrete occurred. Instead, his queen and now regent, Ogul Kaimish, politely turned down the diplomatic offer. Louis dispatched another envoy to the Mongol court, the Franciscan William of Rubric, who went to visit the great Khan Monk in Mongolia. He spent several years at the Mongol court. In 1259, Burke, the ruler of the Golden Horde, westernmost part of the Mongolian Empire, demanded the submission of Louis. 
On the contrary, Mongolian emperors Monk and Kublai's brother, the Ilkhan Hulegu, sent a letter seeking military assistance from the King of France, but the letter did not reach France. Eighth Crusade In a parliament held at Paris, 24 March 1267, Louis and his three sons took the cross. On hearing the reports of the missionaries, Louis resolved to land at Tunis, and he ordered his younger brother, Charles of Anjou, to join him there. The Crusaders, among whom was Prince Edward of England, landed at Carthage 17 July 1270, but disease broke out in the camp. Many died of dysentery, and on 25 August, Louis himself died. <laughs> Patron of arts and arbiter of Europe Louis's patronage of the arts drove much innovation in Gothic art and architecture, and the style of his court radiated throughout Europe by both the purchase of art objects from Parisian masters for export, and by the marriage of the king's daughters and female relatives to foreign husbands and their subsequent introduction of Parisian models elsewhere. Louis's personal chapel, the Saint-Chapelle in Paris, was copied more than once by his descendants elsewhere. Louis most likely ordered the production of the Morgan Bible, a masterpiece of medieval painting. During the so-called Golden Century of St. Louis, the Kingdom of France was at its height in Europe, both politically and economically. St. Louis was regarded as primus inter pares, first among equals, among the kings and rulers of the continent. He commanded the largest army and ruled the largest and wealthiest kingdom, the European center of arts and intellectual thought at the time. The foundations for the famous College of Theology later known as the Sorbonne were laid in Paris about the year 1257. The prestige and respect felt in Europe for King Louis IX were due more to the attraction that his benevolent personality created rather than to military domination. For his contemporaries, he was the quintessential example of the Christian prince and embodied the whole of Christendom in his person. His reputation for saintliness and fairness was already well established while he was alive, and on many occasions he was chosen as an arbiter in quarrels among the rulers of Europe. Shortly before 1256, Engarand IV, Lord of Cousy, arrested and without trial hanged three young squires of Lawn whom he accused of poaching in his forest. In 1256 Louis had him arrested and brought to the Louvre by his sergeants. Engarand demanded judgment by his peers and trial by battle, which the king refused because he thought it obsolete. Engarand was tried, sentenced, and ordered to pay 12,000 livres. Part of the money was to pay for masses in perpetuity for the men he had hanged. In 1258, Louis and James I of Aragon signed the Treaty of Corbet, under which Louis renounced his feudal overlordship over the county of Barcelona and Roussillon, which was held by the king of Aragon. James in turn renounced his feudal overlordship over several counties in southern France including Provence and Languedoc. In 1259 Louis signed the Treaty of Paris, by which Henry III of England was confirmed in his possession of territories in southwestern France and Louis received the provinces of Anjou, Normandy, Normandy Poitou, Maine, and Touraine. <laughs> Religious nature The perception of Louis IX as the exemplary Christian prince was reinforced by his religious zeal. Louis was a very devout Catholic, and he built the Saint Chapelle, Holy Chapel, located within the Royal Palace complex, now the Paris Hall of Justice, on the Ile de la Cité in the center of Paris. The Saint Chapelle, a perfect example of the rayonant style of Gothic architecture, was erected as a shrine for what he believed to be the crown of thorns and a fragment of the true cross, supposed precious relics of the Passion of Christ. Louis purchased these in 1239 to 41 from Emperor Baldwin II of the Latin Empire of Constantinople for the exorbitant sum of 135,000 livres. The construction of the chapel, for comparison, cost only 60,000 livres. Louis IX took very seriously his mission as «Lieutenant of God on Earth», with which he had been invested when he was crowned in Reims. To fulfill this duty, he conducted two crusades, and even though both ended disastrously, they contributed to his prestige. Everything he did was for what he saw as the glory of God and the good of his people. He protected the poor and was never heard speak ill of anyone. He excelled in penance and had a great love for the Church. He was merciful even to rebels. 
When he was urged to put to death a prince who had followed his father in rebellion, he refused, saying, A son cannot refuse to obey his father. In 1230, the king forbade all forms of usury, defined at the time as any taking of interest. Where the original borrowers from Jewish and Lombard lenders could not be found, Louis exacted from the lenders a contribution towards the crusade which Pope Gregory was then trying to launch. Louis also ordered, at the urging of Pope Gregory IX, the burning in Paris in 1243 of some 12,000 manuscript copies of the Talmud and other Jewish books. Eventually, the edict against the Talmud was overturned by Gregory IX's successor, Innocent IV. In addition to Louis's legislation against usury, he expanded the scope of the Inquisition in France and set the punishment for blasphemy to mutilation of the tongue and lips. The area most affected by this expansion was southern France where the Cathar sect had been strongest. The rate of these confiscations reached its highest levels in the years before his first crusade, and slowed upon his return to France in 1254. In 1250, he headed a crusade band was taken prisoner. During his captivity, he recited the divine office every day. After his release against ransom, he visited the Holy Land before returning to France. In these deeds, Louis IX tried to fulfill what he saw as the duty of France as the eldest daughter of the Church. La fille aînée de l'Église, a tradition of protector of the Church going back to the Franks and Charlemagne, who had been crowned by the Pope Leo III in Rome in 800. Indeed, the kings of France were known by the title, Most Christian King, Rex Christianissimus. The relationship between France and the papacy was at its peak in the 12th and 13th centuries, and most of the Crusades were actually called by the popes from French soil. Eventually, in 1309, Pope Clement V even left Rome and relocated to the French city of Avignon, beginning the era known as the Avignon Papacy, or, more disparagingly, the Babylonian Captivity. Louis was renowned for his charity. Beggars were fed from his table, he ate their leavings, washed their feet, ministered to the wants of the lepers, and daily fed over 100 poor. He founded many hospitals and houses, the House of the Fille Dieu for reformed prostitutes, the Cannes Vinct for 300 blind men 1254, hospitals at Pontoise, Vernon, Compiègne, St. Louis installed a house of the Trinitarian Order in his Chateau of Fontainebleau. He chose Trinitarians as his chaplains, and was accompanied by them on his crusades. In his spiritual testament he wrote, My dearest son, you should permit yourself to be tormented by every kind of martyrdom before you would allow yourself to commit a mortal sin. <laughs> Ancestry <laughs> Children. Blanche the 12th of July the 4th of December 1240 to the 29th of April 1243 died in infancy Isabella the 2nd of March 1241 to the 28th of January 1271 married Theobald the 2nd of Navarre Louis the 23rd of September 1243 24th February 1244 to the 11th of January the 2nd of February 1260 Betrothed to Berengaria of Castile in Paris on the 20th of August 1255. Philip III, the 1st of May 1245 to the 5th of October 1285, married firstly to Isabella of Aragon in 1262 and secondly to Maria of Brabant in 1274. John 1246-1247 to 10 March 1248, died in infancy. John Tristan, the 8th of April 1250 to the 3rd of August 1270, Count of Valois, married Yolanda II, Countess of Nevers. Peter, 1251 6/7 April 1284, Count of Perch and Alencon, married Joanne of Chatelone. Blanche, early 1253 to 17 June 1320, married Ferdinand de la Cerda, Infante of Castile. Margaret, early 1255 July 1271, married John I, Duke of Brabant. Robert, 1256 to 7 February 1317, Count of Clermont, married Beatrice of Burgundy. The French crown devolved upon his male line descendant, Henry IV, when the legitimate male line of Robert's older brother Philip III died out in 1589. 
Agnes 1260 1920s December 1327 married Robert II Duke of Burgundy Louis had his two children that died in infancy to be buried at the Cistercian Abbey of Royaumont in 1820 they were transferred to Saint Denis Basilica Topic <laughs> Death and Legacy During his Second Crusade, Louis died at Tunis on 25 August 1270, in an epidemic of dysentery that swept through his army. As Tunis was Muslim territory, his body was subject to the process known as Mos Teutonicus a post-mortem funerary custom used in medieval Europe whereby the flesh was boiled from the body, so that the bones of the deceased could be transported hygienically from distant lands back home for its transportation back to France. He was succeeded by his son, Philip III. His heart and intestines, however, were conveyed by his younger brother, Charles I of Naples, for burial in the Cathedral of Monreal near Palermo. His bones were carried in a lengthy processional across Sicily, Italy, the Alps, and France, until they were interred in the Royal Necropolis at Saint Denis in May 1271. Charles and Philip later disbursed a number of relics to promote his veneration. Veneration as a saint Pope Boniface VIII proclaimed the canonization of Louis in 1297, he is the only French king to be declared a saint. Louis IX is often considered the model of the ideal Christian monarch. The impact of his canonization was so great that many of his successors were named Louis. Named in his honor, the Sisters of Charity of St. Louis is a Roman Catholic religious order founded in Vannes, France, in 1803. A similar order, the Sisters of St. Louis, was founded in Julie in 1842. He is honored as co-patron of the Third Order of St. Francis, which claims him as a member of the order. Even in childhood, his compassion for the poor and suffering people had been obvious to all who knew him and when he became king, over a hundred poor people ate in his house on ordinary days. Often the king served these guests himself. Such acts of charity, coupled with Louis's devout religious practices, gave rise to the legend that he joined the Third Order of St. Francis. Though it is unlikely that Louis did join the order, his life and actions proclaimed him one of them in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Places named after St. Louis The cities of San Luis Potosi in Mexico, St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis Park, Minnesota, St. Louis, Michigan, San Luis, Arizona, San Luis, Colorado, St. Louis du Senegal, St. Louis in Alsace, as well as Lake St. Louis in Quebec, the Mission San Luis Rey de Francia in California and São Luis, Maranhão in Brazil are among the many places named after the French king and saint. The Cathedral St. Louis in Versailles, the Basilica of St. Louis, King of France completed in 1834 and the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis completed in 1914, both in St. Louis, Missouri, and the St. Louis Cathedral, New Orleans were also named for the king. The French Royal Order of St. Louis 1693-1790 and 1814-1830, the Ile St. Louis as well as a hospital in the 10th arrondissement of Paris also bear his name. The National Church of France in Rome also carries his name, San Luigi dei Franceschi in Italian or St. Louis of France in English. Also the Cathedral of St. Louis in Plovdiv, Bulgaria, the Church of St. Louis in Moscow, Russia, and Rue St. Louis of Pondicherry Port Louis, the capital city of Mauritius, as well as its cathedral are also named after St. Louis, who is the patron saint of the island. Thailand, St. Louis Hospital, and St. Louis Church in Sothon, Bangkok were named after St. Louis, the patron saint of the founder. The name, St. Louis, also exists as the St. Louis Neighborhood, and SOI St. Louis 1, 2 and 3 Alley SOI Sothon 11, 13 and 15, officially, which are the area within the hospital. Notable portraits. A bas-relief of St. Louis is one of the carved portraits of historic lawmakers that adorns the chamber of the United States House of Representatives. St. Louis is also portrayed on a frieze depicting a timeline of important lawgivers throughout world history in the courtroom at the Supreme Court of the United States. 
A statue of St. Louis by the sculptor John Donahue stands on the roofline of the New York State Appellate Division Court at 27 Madison Avenue in New York City. The Apotheosis of St. Louis is an equestrian statue of the saint, by Charles Henry Niehaus, that stands in front of the St. Louis Art Museum in Forest Park. A heroic portrait by Baron Charles de Steuben hangs in the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Baltimore. An 1821 gift of King Louis XVIII of France, it depicts St. Louis burying his plague-stricken troops before the Siege of Tunis at the beginning of the Eighth Crusade in 1270. In fiction Davis, William Stearns, "'Fillets of the Blessed Voice", a.k.a. The White Queen", New York, New York, Macmillan, 1904 Peter Burling, The Children of the Grail Jules Verne, "'To the Sun, Off on a Comet", a comet takes several bits of the Earth away when it grazes the Earth. Some people, taken up at the same time, find the tomb of St. Louis as one of the bits, as they explore the comet. Adam Gidwitz, The Inquisitor's Tale. 